pam 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 hey everybody it's time for a very special coffee with scott adams i'll be your host scott adams and i hope you have an afternoon appropriate beverage to join me for yet another simultaneous sip this one in the service of solving the country's biggest problem at the moment, which is the government shutdown, a big hardship for many people. On top of that, the disagreement about the budget for the border wall. And are you ready to join me for the simultaneous sip? Oh, that's good afternoon sipping. All right, so here's the launch point. Uh, I think you're all following the news. You know that uh, the Democrats uh, don't want to agree to President Trump's uh, request for $5.7 billion for some kind of barrier structure situation. But at the same time, they also agree that we need border security. So we civilians watching this, the people who vote, the people who own this country, the voters in this democratic-like process, we look at these politicians who seem to be saying the same frickin' thing, and because they can't agree to agree on the thing that they agree on, literally, that's what's happening. They're, they're failing to agree on the stuff that they agree on, which is engineers should figure out some good way to secure the border. So in the meanwhile, uh, they've got the best jobs in the world, where if they don't do their jobs, and here I'm talking about the president as well as Congress. If they don't do their jobs, they get to punish strangers. Well, like literally, they're punishing strangers. I never wanted to be in Congress so much as I do right now. Because I'm thinking every other time I've had a job or, or done something you know, that required making money, if I did something terrible, usually something happened to me. It's true. But apparently there are jobs where if you do a really bad job, they just punish other people and they will just keep punishing them until you start doing your job. And in fact, they will punish them as hard as they need to to make you do your job. So I thought I would solve all this. And as you know, I like to jump in and talk about uh, persuasion as a, a filter on the news. And I'm going to give you a suggestion that you haven't seen yet, no one, has, no one has yet discussed this option, and it's a simple reframing of the problem so that you move from the political uh, you know, loggerhead situation and you move it into you know, a, a problem-solving frame. And the, the, the solution goes like this. You simply ask the Democrats, and you give them time. You know, that it doesn't have to have, happen in a week or anything. But you just say, could you draw a picture for the country of what your preferred version of border security looks like? And if you want, and if you want, you know, if you want big uh, parts that don't have fences, don't have borders or anything, you know, maybe you, you have a drone. Yeah, maybe you say that the, there are water features that stop enough people that, you know, that's good enough. But just draw us a picture. So this one's just conceptual and label it. You might label it like, what does this part cost? You might label that you're going to add a bunch of, uh, I think they're going to add some scanning technology. They want to, and they are, I think. Maybe they need some extra dogs. There are a theoretical number of dogs that make this a lot uh, safer. So let's just see their budget on a picture of the border that says, yeah, you know, we'll put a little, we'll put a little, uh, steel lattice there. This is a special case. Or they'll say, eh, we just need some low barbed wire with you know, some sensors. You know, even Israel does that in some places. And they put a little dollar amount on it and say, oh, this is, this is uh, 10 million or whatever it is. So just show us what you would do. Because remember, the, the thing that both sides, <laughs> both sides have agreed to at this point is that they want strong border security. They want capable border security, but they want it to be moral. 
Now, if you're the Republicans, how exactly do you negotiate with someone whose standard is the morality of barriers and that I guess there are some that are more moral than others? There's nothing you can do with that. So you have to take that completely out of that frame and simply ask them to lead. So the president could, or in fact, let me, let me take the president out of this. What does the president have to do with this? Nothing at this point. So what I'm saying, you don't need the president's involvement whatsoever. You know, you, you and I are enough. Suppose we say, I would love to see your plan and mean it. All right, here's the key. You have to really mean it. And I mean it. I'm, I'm 100% sincere. And I think pretty much everybody watching this is going to have the same reaction, right? Wouldn't you like to see what we already have, maybe overlaid with, you know, some, let's say some information from border security or border patrol, whatever, that says, you know, we're letting this many people are coming in this way and, you know, this many people are coming in this way. You know, put a little high level statistics on it whatever you think is important, and then just draw us a picture. It might be a few different pages, you know, because of the, you know, the size of things, etc. But just make it simple. Show us a picture of what we got, and show us a picture of what you'd like to get us to. And I will make a firm commitment here. If it looks good, <clears throat> if it looks good, and it doesn't have an ounce of wall... I'm good with it. Wouldn't you be? (laughs) I mean, is there anybody who really cares if there's a wall? (laughs) I I think we're way past that, right? If they could make the case that a a wall in all cases doesn't make sense, wouldn't you accept that? Now, it would have to be a really good case, right? And, you know, there are lots of experts who can give you an idea of when walls work and when they don't. Now, my full expectation, to be fair, my full expectation is that nobody could make a case for no walls the entire border. I don't think anybody could make the case. But don't you think you owe it to the country to listen to the case? All they have to do is make it. Just let it make the case. Uh, I would listen to this, and I would, I would get behind whatever solution the expert said. Now, the news networks, of course, need fodder. They need stuff to talk about. How much fun would it be, and I mean this seriously, to get sort of the high-level education about how all this stuff is done? Wouldn't you love to know exactly what an electronic wall looks like? Wouldn't you love to see some of the startups that are doing things? Wouldn't you sort of geekishly, wouldn't you like to know what has worked in other places? It would be kind of fun. Yeah, I, I, I would be addicted to it, frankly, uh, just from the engineering nerdiness of it all. So let's, uh, let's see if we can uh, get the Democrats, and I mean this completely seriously, to get out of the frame they're in and into a frame of, here's what we would do, because it doesn't help us to say we won't do it because it's immoral. It just doesn't help. Now, I probably wouldn't care about any of this, frankly. Like, I'm not that invested in most issues. But when you've got 800,000 frickin' Americans who are being tortured because some other people can't do their jobs, well, maybe they need a little help. (laughs) So I thought I'd jump in and see if I could maybe, uh, maybe make a difference. So that's all I've got to say. I want to just keep it on this one topic. Uh... (laughs) All right, looking at your comments, looks like uh, we've done what we need to do here. And I will talk to you later.